Hi guys, welcome to Delora Studios. Let's get to discuss saving and restoring activity states in Android. There are a few scenarios in which your activity is destroyed due to normal app behavior, such as when the user presses the back button or your activity signals the finish method. In the case of a screen rotation from portrait to landscape and vice versa, the activity gets destroyed and recreated again. Thereby, some loss of data might be observed, with a change in list view scroll position as well. In this tutorial, I'll be walking you through on how to save your activity state in order to undo the resume state of the Android application and restore the data on phone rotation. As your activity begins to stop, the system calls the unsave instant state method so your activity can save the state information with the key value pairs. Let's get started. Right here in Android Studio, I have a demo application. Basically, this application is structured on a form that takes in uh, three input feeds, uh, the employee name, first name, last name, and title. And there's a save button to save to view. So this is actually going to get uh, the input from the edit text and save it to a string below. So this is just the layout structure of this particular demo application. What about we use a scroll view, uh, the layout view to uh, depict each layout of the form. That's the first name and last name. We have for the employee title. And uh, we have the save button, which triggers the onclick save view method where it will be inst uh, instantiated that in the class and there's there are three text views below the button which actually going to display uh, the appropriate name title and so on so we have for the first name the last name and the title let's go straight to the main activity i have some code commented out I'll actually run this code just as it is so we'll be able to look at that right in the emulator and I'm actually going to uh, rotate the screen so we'll get to see if there's uh, a persistent save of data or not. Basically this application as you're seeing actually gets uh, an edit text the first name last name tied to on department and uh, it initializes there whereby it gets the appropriate ID and at the same time we have a string variable which we actually add from the text view we have the text view right there the first last and the title uh, which we initialize as well and call this appropriate ID and if we should look at the save view method this actually sets the text uh, to the value of the edit text you get the text you convert to string and you trim up and set that to the appropriate text view so which we actually display the view so let's get to look at the application right there in the emulator I have it running the emulator I'll fill out the fields and get to save to view and rotate the screen and see what happens software developer With this. Once I save to view, I have the name speeded out by Medele Ogunchigara, software developer. Now let me rotate the screen. Can you see that the view disappeared? We couldn't save the state of the data persistently on screen rotation. This is not a good user experience back to the portrait uh, view of the application. So for us to actually have a saver state of the, of the data, we need to override a method, which is called on save instant state. So I'll walk you through now to actually achieve this. Firstly, I'll uncomment some aspects out now. Now these are the three constants of keys that we'll be needing based on the first name, last name, and title. We we'll give it a public static final string and uh, their corresponding values. So these are keys that will be 
actually calling right there in the course of the uh, instant state. Now, right there in the onCreate method, we get to check if the safe instant state is not equal to null. But before I go through the if and the else statement, I would like to check out the save instant state method. For you to save a state of a persistent data, you need to override the unsave instant state, which take a parameter, which is the save instant state, that's the bundle. And in this particular bundle, that's when you get to put in the key value pairs you're trying to save persistently. For this uh, demo, we need to save the name, the first name, the last name, and the title. That's where you call the save instance state object of the bundle. You put a string, if it's an integer, if it's a double, based on the data type you are talking about. We call the key, which we declared earlier, which is the key first name, which depicts the first name. And now we need to pass in the value. What about we need to get the text, which is from where the edit text and convert that to string. Or you get that from the text view. You can get from the edit text, you can get from the text view. Best way to approach this is to actually get it from a view already, which is from the text view. And uh, we have it right there from the first, which is the first uh, name. Uh, we get the same thing from the last for, for the title, because we've actually set that right there when you click on the save view method. Once you click on the save view button, you have that as uh, set. So that's uh, where we could be able to get this value. This value shouldn't be null. And uh, we got the last name and also we got the title based on the value set when you click the save view method. Afterwards, right there in the onCreate method, you need to check if the save instance state is not equal to null. Because if it's, if it's equal to null, that means the, it's a new entry you're trying to uh, get back. Well, if it's not equal to null, definitely it's going to pick from the instance state that uh, is saved. Because once the, app, once the activity is closing up or finishing, it actually saves some data right to the save instance state method. And once it's relaunching or resuming again, it's actually, first of all, check if there's a save instance state right there in the bundle. And if not, it's actually create a new one. But if there is, it's actually going to call those data firstly before it uh, creates any other layout. So that's why we need to check that if it's null or not. If it's not equal to null, definitely there's some data right there in the bundle. You call the save instance state to get the string, which is the key for the first name. You pass that to a variable called save first name. And now you need to set that right there to the view, to the, to the text view. And you set the text to save it back. The same thing goes for the last name. You get the key and I uh, extract the value from the key and you save that right there to the last name. The same thing applicable to the title. So from there, you'll be able to have a persistent save of data on screen rotation. So from here, I would like to launch this application again and let's see if we can, if this will actually save the data persistently even when we need to rotate uh, the screen. So let's look back to the emulator. Uh, we'll get to see that uh, speed it out. Cool. We have that right there. So let me lock in the data. Save to view. Cool. We have it. Now let me rotate the screen. Can you see that? We have a persistent save of data using the unsaved instance state, passing the key and also the values and extracting that particular value and uh, casting it down to the view right there in the operate method. You can use on restore state instance state uh, instead of uh, right uh, embedding it inside the onCreate method. All are the same because in any uh, relaunch or in any resume of an activity, there is going to be a call to the onCreate method or to the onRestore save instance state. So this is a very good uh, user experience if you are actually handling forms or if you are doing uh, any application whatsoever that you need to keep 
the data persistently even when you're using this, a list a scroll view you need to keep the position on rotation let uh, the scroll list still maintain the position the user scrolled it to so it shouldn't start from the beginning that's a good user experience so i'll employ you to uh, integrate saving stand state in any part you feel you need to use it and uh, this is just the first level of saving of data we have shared preferences we have the database the sqlite database and we have files these are all uh, out of the box from android to help build a better app that saves data persistently thank you guys for hanging out with me throughout the session and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel let me rotate back to so still have the state of the data can you see that let's keep this data state persistent thank you guys one more time and have a pleasant time